So Monrovia started in May of 1886 and grew not so much in 86, but by 1887 was growing substantially and there was a need for a local bank or banks. There were two groups who were interested in investing in a bank. One was had probably headed up by John Brossert, who was a Los Angeles grocer who had interest in Monrovia. In fact, I live in John Brossert's house. And his associates, among others, included Joseph Sartori. The other group was comprised of William Monroe and some of his associates, for example, Jerome Case was an associate. Probably General Pyle might have been part of that group. They both wanted to have the coveted title of First National Bank of Monrovia. So you had to petition the control of the currency in Washington, D.C. to obtain that title. Sartori heard that Monroe's contingent had sent their request by mail. And Sartori thought, I think I can get around that. I think a former law associate of his in Iowa had gone to Washington, D.C., so he telegraphed the friend in Washington and had him hand walk or hand deliver the request to the controller, so they aced out the other bank, which then became the Granite Bank of Monrovia, and Sartori's and Brossard's contingent became the first national bank of Monrovia. The Granite Bank lasted until sometime probably the early 90s. And at that time, the board of directors wanted to relocate <clears throat> their operation. So they petitioned, got permission to relocate to Los Angeles. And then later on, when San Diego was a hub of activity, they again petitioned to relocate. So that bank relocated with a name change to San Diego, and I don't know what happened to it. And where that. were each of these two early banks located? Well, the First National operated first as a private banking institution, I think called the Bank of Monrovia, in Breded Storperat. Once they had the title First National Bank, they had plans drawn for their own building which was a large two-story building on the southwest corner of Myrtle and Colorado. The description was it was a pressed brick and Tehachapi greenstone, which apparently was a native rock in the Tehachapi Mountains that was quarried and then used as ornamental rock in building design. Years ago, when Howard Jew and I were going through the barn at the Anderson House, we found the plans for that bank building tucked away in a drawer. Since we first thought was, well, why are they here? And then the second thought was, well, George Anderson worked for the bank. He probably, after that bank was abandoned, and when the new building was constructed in 1990, he probably just took them because they were not going to be used, took them home with him, and that's why they were there. So the First Nationals was a two-story brick building. The Grand Bank had decided they were going to build a two-story brick, a building out of not brick, but granite. It was hewn, taken from stone, quarried in Monrovia Canyon, transported to the site, which was the southwest corner of Myrtle and Palm. And the stone, they set up the shacks, the masons set up their green quarters. They quarried or they carved the stone on location and then constructed the building from that carved stone. It, again, large two-story building. Front facing on Myrtle had two large arched windows with a centrally placed doorway to access the office space on the second floor. The second floor was offices, I think board or director's room was either on the second floor or maybe behind the ground floor banking location. Anyway, the building started to be rented to the city of Monrovia in the early 1890s and then was purchased as part of the bond issues in 1905 to continue serving as Monrovia City Hall. The first national remained in its original location until 1909 
when they built the second structure diagonally across the street on the northeast corner of Myrtle and Colorado. Continued under that name, First National Bank of Monrovia. So when the Granite Bank building was used as the city hall, what else was in that building? When the Monrovia Public Library first opened, it was housed in the south storefront on Myrtle Avenue of that building and was in that location until the Carnegie Library opened in 1908 when the library was transferred to that location. Later on, that south banking room housed the Monrovia's firefighting equipment. There are pictures of the building. They took the windows that were on Myrtle Avenue put doors in their place so they could house the fire engine, the original tourist or fire engine from 1910 in that location. The building also served as the city jail. They, in fact, the Monrovia Museum has the invoice or copy of the invoice from 1904 when they established the city jail in that location. It was cast iron, mentions the capacity, etc. And the city marshal at that time was taken to task for the level of maintenance that he performed on the cell. And his comment was, well, I've swept it twice in the last year and it's a lot cleaner than some of the occupants. So I don't know how long it served. Probably it may, it may have served until the police station first police facility was built in 1925, including a jail. But the first city jail was in the Granite Bank building in the rear on one side. The banking, the Granite Bank itself, as I mentioned, moved into Los Angeles. Years ago, I was looking for artifacts from the Granite Bank and a firm that specializes in old stock certificates had for sale a wonderful stock certificate for the Granite Bank. Stock was issued to Jerome Case's son. Might even have been a transfer of stock that J.I. Case had in the bank after his death to his son. But it has an engraving of the bank building on the, on the top of the stock certificate with all the scrolls and nicely engraved. I thought about it until I looked at the price tag. I think they wanted 250 bucks, and I thought, yeah, it's a great artifact, but I'm not willing to spend $250 to add it to my personal collection. But nice as again, a nice memento of early Monrovia banking. The First National, in 1903, facilitated the founding of the Monrovia Savings Bank. At that time, it's my understanding, that commercial banks were not allowed to offer interest-bearing accounts. The way they got around that provision was to form an entirely different corporate structure, usually with the same officers and board of directors, and usually housed in the same bank building as the commercial side, but a separate entity. So the Monrovia Savings Bank and the First National Bank of Monrovia existed in the same location initially. They would have savings accounts. They could do long-term lending, so they probably had held long or had new mortgages as part of their, their portfolio of investments. That lasted until probably the teens or the 20s when the banking regulations were changed that would allow a commercial bank to offer interest-bearing accounts as well. The Monrovia Savings Bank remained in the original location, the southwest corner of Lemon, I'm sorry, Myrtle and Colorado, when the First National relocated diagonally across the street. And then in the early 1920s, the First National, or I'm sorry, the Monrovia Savings Bank moved to a brand new location at the southeast corner of Myrtle and Lyme. When Security Trust and Savings Bank was merged into Security Bank, I'm sorry, 
First National Bank and the Monrovia Savings Bank were merged into Security Trust and Savings Bank. They continued for several years as separate entities, basically two blocks apart, two and a half blocks apart. So finally the Savings Bank location was merged into the security, the main branch of Monrovia. And that bank passed that branch, passed out of existence. The building itself still exists, and the corner location now houses Basin 141. Or let's go back to the First National, organized with John Brosser as the president and Joseph Sartori as the cashier. Sartori remained with the First National for about two years. And then he decided that banking opportunities would be better in Los Angeles, so he moved into Los Angeles and started what I believe was originally called the Security Bank and Trust Company in Los Angeles. That ultimately became the Security Trust and Savings Bank. And through a series of mergers in the late 1920s, became the Security First National Bank of Los Angeles, which survived until about 1992, when as then Security Pacific National Bank, it was merged into Bank of America. And his role during these so years? Sartori was the president of the bank until probably the late 1930s, so he navigated and steered it through a series of expansion, mergers, etc. So it became a major Southern California banking powerhouse. Now, Sartori got to know Isaiah Hellman, who was part of the Hellman Bank and Trust Company in Los Angeles, but also very prominent, if not the head of the Nevada National Bank in San Francisco. That bank merged with Wells Fargo early on to form the Wells Fargo Nevada National Bank. And then they grew <clears throat> and absorbed what had been the American Trust Company, which was the San Francisco Bank. That became Wells Fargo Bank American Trust Company. And then they gradually dropped the American Trust Company subsidiary name it simply became Wells Fargo Bank. For many, many years, Security First National Bank of Los Angeles and Wells Fargo had a gentleman's agreement that whether security would not move into Wells Fargo's almost exclusively Northern California territory and that Wells Fargo would not move south into what was Security Bank or Security Trust and Savings Banks or Security First National's territory. That finally changed in the 1960s. Expansion began in both directions. And so the old gentleman's agreement went by the board. Security bought Pacific National Bank of San Francisco, and Wells Fargo brought, bought the former Citizens National Trust Bank of Los Angeles. And then they began to operate in each other's territories. But for many years, they had this reciprocal arrangement respecting each other's service territories. 1904, the Granite Bank and Trust Company was established in Monrovia. That would have been a savings bank specializing in savings accounts and home mortgages. And then a year later, in 1905, the American National Bank of, of, Los, of, sorry, of Monrovia was founded as a commercial bank. Again, same arrangement two corporate, separate corporate entities, generally speaking the same officers and directors, and in the same physical location. That arrangement lasted until about 1927, when that, the American National, had gone through several name changes. It was the National Bank in Monrovia, then that was the first National Bank in Monrovia, after security had become part of 
or after the first national had become part of the security system, and that national name, local national name no longer existed, the American National changed its name to become the National Bank of Monrovia, or the first national bank in Monrovia, and then they were bought by Bank of Italy. A motto, you know, APG and any San Francisco banking institution. Which ultimately became Bank of America. Became Bank of America. And, and as, it, as the, the coup de grace swallowed up security. So we have these two rival banking institutions that lasted through mergers over well over a hundred years, almost a hundred years. And one ended up gobbling up the other. And Isaiah Hellman, was, did he have a relationship to any banks in Monrovia? He was served for many years as the vice president and a board, board, member of the board of directors of the First National Bank of Monrovia. In Los Angeles, I mentioned the Hellman Bank and Trust Company. I'm sure he was involved with several others. But he came to Los Angeles very early, like 1870s, and was one of the dean, deans of banking on the Pacific West Coast, together with Joseph Sartori. They held very, they had reputable, extremely reputable standing among bankers and also were leaders in education and social outreach. Hellman, I believe, was part of the founding group that organized the University of Southern California in 1880. Sartori's wife, Margaret, was involved in the University of Southern California at Los Angeles. Sartori started the Los Angeles Country Club, was a member of other Los Angeles social organizations. The California Community Foundation. California Community Foundation. 1915, founded as a, a way of philanthropic outreach to Southern California. Shall I mention George Anderson? Sure. George worked for the First National Bank of Monrovia retired from what was then Security First National Bank of Los Angeles. George had no one to leave his money to, and so he quite naturally chose the California Community Foundation as the beneficiary of his estate. Back in my banking days, I used to receive as a branch manager with security the annual statement from the California Community Foundation because the bank was the trustee for the foundation. And I was looking at one year's and I was interested to see that Anderson Estate, about 1975, represented $750,000. At that time, it was the largest individual bequest to be received by the foundation. And later on, some of us involved with local historical activities thought to ourselves, wouldn't it be nice if some of that money came back to Monrovia where it came from in the first place? The foundation did give a $9,000 grant to the Friends of the Monrovia Public Library so they could buy the Anderson House from the foundation. They couldn't sell it. So they wisely decided, we'll just give the money, grant the money so it can be purchased and taken off our hands. Yeah. Other later banks, the Citizens Bank of Monrovia opened about 1926. And that went through a series of mergers. It was, became part of the United States National Bank of San Diego. Then it was swallowed up by Crocker Citizens National Bank, and then that was swallowed up by Wells Fargo, ultimately. A couple other savings and loans, the Monrovia Mutual Building and Loan started early on, maybe in the 20s. That merged into Brentwood Savings, and then that became Citibank. Others became CalFed, etc. So, 
former Bank of America location that was, well, first the American National Bank moved up the street in 1911 into a larger banking facility. The building, the core of the building is still there. In fact, when I was a youngster, I used to look up at the building name at the very top. It said American National Bank Building. And I thought, why is it called that when the bank that's on the, the location is the Bank of America? Well, it's because through a series of mergers, the bank name changed, but they didn't change the name of the building itself. So that name persisted until the early 60s when the building was, re was completely redone and the ground floor location, banking location, became Wilshire Federal Savings. And then I think that became Glendale Federal Savings. And then I believe that became Citibank. The CalFed, anyway, whole lots of later it's banking institutions and mergers. But the two ones to keep in mind, the Granite Bank and First National Bank of America.